raise your hand if you consider yourself a consistent person. That you are in control. Okay, that's quite a few of you. Now, you might consider who you might be voting for, for an election before you do so, like read up on the candidate. You might think quite carefully about which pension fund you might opt into, and you might even prefer going into the supermarket with a shopping list. Now, I want to show you that you don't have as much control as you might think you do. That you and everyone else around you is a little bit different all of the time. Now, take your last week, for example. Now, last week, you were you, of course, but you were also a bit Monday. And that Monday feeling is associated with this, and this, and for some people, even this. <laughs> Now, even if you're in control, that can affect you. You might leave yourself feeling quite resistant to a Monday. But when you get to that Friday version of you, and you get to take your suit off and let your hair down, and you may even be tempted to loosen up in other types of ways, you might feel like quite a different version of you. And that different version of you might actually make different types of choices than the you that governs you for the rest of the week. Actually, let's test this. So raise your hand if you went out to the pub, had a couple of drinks last week, Thursday. Very few. Now, let's try this again. Raise your hand if you went out to the pub last week, Friday. That is a good few more. Right, so this is not surprising, because we know that time governs us. That, in a small way, our behavior is connected through time. But let's take this up a notch. Now, drinking isn't that relevant, right? It's not that important. But what about something that's a lot more important, like voting? Now, raise your hand if you think that you are more likely to vote your country to independence on a Thursday compared to other days of the week. No? No hands? What about Friday? No hands either, right? Because this is a confusing question. Surely you'd vote exactly the same way on any day of the week. Well, my research shows that that's not true, that weekday does make a difference. I found that outcomes of decisions, even for important ones, are different depending on the day of the week on which they are taken. See, as a behavioral scientist, I look at patterns in data that can tell us something about the human mind and how that mind is influenced by time. Like everyday types of time, the time of day, the day of the week, the month of the year, or even years in general. Because I found these curious patterns in decisions that should have been consistent over time, but were not, like voting. And I looked at a very specific type of vote, the Scottish independence referendum of 2014. Now, this was a unique chance for Scottish citizens to decide whether they wanted to become independent of the rest of the United Kingdom, a union that had been in place since the 18th century. So obviously, a lot of thought had been put into this. Now, ahead of the Scottish independence referendums, you have polls, and those polls run across all weekdays. Now, I analyzed the voting intentions of 80,000 of those Scottish citizens to see how they were feeling on those polls. And one of the most surprising things I found was this bizarre pattern, where on Monday, about half of people wanted independence. Then on Tuesday, a little bit less. On Wednesday, even less, to the point where on Thursday, 4% more people voted against independence as compared to Friday. Now, guess on what day of the week the referendum was held? A Thursday. Now, what my data shows is that because it was such a close call, if that referendum had been held on a Friday, we would now be on our way to Scotland becoming independent. Now, that something so irrelevant to this decision could actually determine the outcome of that decision might seem absurd. But this is not an isolated incident. I found the same pattern for Brexit and the election of Donald Trump. 
Now, in most countries, elections are always held on one particular day. In case of the UK, elections have been held on a Thursday since 1935. What that means is that that practice has been biasing elections towards a more cautious outcome for all that time, and that when it's a close call, the day of the week on which an election is held could determine its outcome. So what is going on here? Well, we don't know everything yet, but we do know that the human mind interacts with time. And that time affects us, that it affects all of us, and that it affects us all of the time. But how? Well, to find that out, we need to look at a human lifetime. Here we have one. 52 weeks of the year by 90 years, if we're lucky. Now, a common way to slice a human life is like this. And that makes sense, because we know that age tells us a lot about a human's behavior. And there's flocks of scientists that are paying attention to this. Same goes for seasons, as well as for the much more repetitive 24-hour day. But all of these temporal contexts are connected. They are all, to some extent, related to our biological clock and how the sun and the moon respond to our bodies. But there's one cycle that is unique, that is entirely man-made, a cycle that we have designed for our convenience, the weekly cycle. Now, this cycle, because it's man-made, feels really strange, right, that it would affect our decision-making. Nonetheless, it looks like it steers our decisions in different directions. So why is this happening? Well, one key element to all decision-making is how much risk we're willing to take. So I look to see whether risk-taking might explain how behavior is changing over the weekly cycle. I did this by using a reliable and simple game. To earn real money, you blow up this on-screen balloon, which will at some point pop. Now, how far you blow up this balloon gives you a risk score. People play this game on every day of the week, and you can then compare their risk scores across weekdays. And the differences are striking. Just like in the election data, risk scores are high on Monday, go down on Tuesday and Wednesday, and reach their lowest score on Thursday, where we become most cautious before reverting back to original risk levels on Friday. Now, this explains the fluctuations we saw in voting. But what about other types of decisions, like buying a house or a financial investment, gambling? These are all decisions that affect us immediately, where the thing you do right now has an immediate consequence. Now, to find out if we see fluctuations there, I started by looking at serious crime. I looked at reorganizing 70,000 FBI crime statistics, bank robberies that have taken place over the last 12 years in the United States. Now, just so we're all on the same page, I'm not talking about these types of bank robberies. I'm talking about these types of bank robberies, impulsive actions with a statistical chance of a positive outcome being very low. Now, this type of crime is actually very similar to other types of serious risk-taking that we might uh, be engaging in. So if we see fluctuations here, that could tell us something about risk-taking on a whole and how it fluctuates over the weekly cycle. And in fact, we see exactly that. So we see this exact same pattern, where it's three times less likely to rob a bank on Wednesday as compared to Friday. And this pattern is incredibly consistent. We see the same pattern every year. I also looked at active shooting incidents. I reorganized them by days of the week, and we see exactly the same pattern again. 30% less likely to take place on a Thursday, and there are also 30% less casualties on Thursdays. So not only is this pattern consistent, but the effect of the weekly cycle on behavior is substantial, despite the gravity of the underlying decision. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. We see the same pattern in economic data, in health statistics, and even in road and safety statistics. Now, what that means is that the day of the week on which any decision is made could determine the outcome. 
Now, these results might seem scary, especially if you're someone who likes holding the reins. But we don't have to stop there. We can use this information to take control of our temporal contexts. We can use it to raise awareness, improve predictions, improve resource allocation, and we can also use it to change behavior. Now, you can do that for yourself in your own life, but also in your capacity as a school teacher, um, as a policymaker, or in business. So let me close with just one example of this. Here we have, by mapping when in the weekly cycle people are more likely to miss medical appointments, begun employing that to improve scheduling in hospitals. And early results show that we've been able to reduce missed medical appointments by 12 percent. Now, this is just one of the ways in which we might be able to save millions by employing our understanding of time. Now, one thing is for sure. We know that this weekly cycle is man-made. We also know that we can't escape this weekly cycle. So the best thing we, th we can do is make sure that we understand it, so we can use it to optimize our choices and arrive at decisions we don't regret. Thank you.